What's up guys? Uh, thanks for joining me down here on the floor uh, for TIG Welding Basics. This is uh, going to be kind of like a little intro video to TIG Welding. Like say you just bought a TIG Welder or, uh, you know, I don't know, you're interested in TIG Welding, you work at a place that has a TIG Welder, uh, maybe you MIG weld a lot and you've kind of heard about TIG Welding, not really sure what it is or what to think about it. Hopefully this video is gonna kind of explain some of that stuff to you. TIG welding stands for tungsten inert gas. So tungsten, which is the electrode you put in your welder. And uh, the inert gas is the shielding gas that comes out of the end of the torch, which in this case is argon. Sometimes in the past a lot, and maybe now still, they used to use helium. So some people actually call it heliarc welding because of the helium. Uh, helium's expensive and it's a non-renewable resource, I'm pretty sure. I'm sure in special applications people still use that, but the most common thing I've seen is argon. And both of those are inert gases, which means they don't react like with anything. I'm not going to say anything, but like they won't explode, the heat doesn't affect them. They just strictly like shield your weld really well. Um, as far as the tungsten goes, they use tungsten because it has the highest melting point of any pure metal. So that makes it really good for welding because it doesn't burn the tungsten away as you're welding. It can have, I don't know, 10,000 degrees of heat for your weld and not affect the tungsten too much. Uh, if you do enough welding, you will see that it does deteriorate a little bit depending on what you use. Uh, I guess they used to use pure tungsten all the time. Now they use tungsten alloys most of the time. Um, it says 2% serrated tungsten. I'm not exactly sure what this one's mixed. I do know orange works well for both aluminum and steel. I honestly don't know much about this. Maybe I'll read up more about this. Um, I usually go off recommendations of other welders, people I've worked with, and just try different ones and see what works for me. For this basic of TIG welding video, we have a basic TIG welder. This is actually my TIG welder. Um, it's a Lincoln Electric Precision TIG 185, as you can see. I'm not even sure if you can buy this exact welder anymore. As you can see, we've got a few basic controls on here. This is an air-cooled welder, meaning there's no pump circulating coolant through the torch. It's just strictly air-cooled. So at high temperatures, this one will get a little bit warm or sustained welding, but it only goes up to 185, so it doesn't weld at extreme temperatures or anything like that. On the front of here, you'll notice the biggest switch it says DC, AC, DC plus. As far as I know, DC plus reverses the current of DC negative, and you use that a lot for like stick welding, maybe some TIG applications. I have never ran a welder over here. Let me know in the comments if you have and what that's particularly used for. DC stands for direct current, which means current goes like this. It makes the electrode negative, and I would assume your base material positive and that's the way it flows the current. And you'll most commonly use that on metals like steel, nickel, titanium, stuff like that. It does a real fine, a real controllable arc. You know, if you're gonna learn to TIG weld, I would recommend starting on some steel in DC is the easiest way to learn to get your hand-eye coordination down with running your torch and your filler metal. Obviously, if you're gonna weld steel, you would use a steel filler metal. Um, this one I'm holding right here is stainless steel. You can use stainless steel rod on mild steel, but it's definitely best to use the same filler rod for the material you're welding. Now stainless steel will make a nice pretty weld and it's kind of easy to learn with. So I like welding with it a lot, especially on stuff that's purely cosmetic like artwork or you know, furniture, something that's not gonna have a lot of high stress and you have to worry about a weld cracking. That's one good advantage of TIG welding. It's really easy to swap out what your filler metal is. We're like a MIG welder with the wire spool. You have to switch out that spool to change what you're welding on if you want to weld with the exact type of filler metal that you're supposed to use for the material you're welding on. You need to swap that out. Or in TIG welding, you're holding it. You just grab another rod and move on. When you're welding steel in DC, this knob right here doesn't do anything. But this one does. This is your pulse frequency knob. A lot of welders have this. Um, it will automatically 
pulse the current up and down depending on how fast you set this at. I don't use this. I usually like move my own pedal up and down to control my heat in, heat out. Some people like this, some people don't. This is your post flow. This is how long the argon gas is gonna flow onto the weld after you're done welding. So once you first strike your arc, you're gonna weld your weld a little bit, and then when you get done, you're gonna let off the pedal, and the gas is gonna keep flowing because you want that to cover it while the weld is cooling down. So that's gonna set the duration of that. You obviously don't want it cranked all the way up. This one goes up to 30 seconds. For a lot of welds, that's way too long, and you're just gonna be wasting gas. This is your output knob, and it controls your amperage. That's about it for this welder. This one doesn't have a lot of controls. Some of the more expensive welders have a lot more controls, like you can actually control your pre-flow for when you hit, if you hit the pedal, it'll actually put out gas before it strikes an arc. That way it can get some shielding started before you weld. Now, like I was saying, if you're gonna weld aluminum, you would switch it to AC, which is alternating current. Alternating current goes like this. It actually sits and swaps the electrode from positive to negative and the base material from positive to negative back and forth the whole time you're welding. So when you weld in DC, I guess oxidation can build up on top, which on steel and stuff, it doesn't really affect that too much. It doesn't really hurt the weld because I guess the way the, you know, the properties of the metals are. But on aluminum, that oxidation, like you'll notice it. If you weld on here, it's gonna get dirty and crappy. So AC allows for a lot more cleaning of the weld into the material, but it is a little bit harder to weld. You can kind of see that the arc is not as controlled and precise. And like I was saying, these more expensive welders will let you control like the frequency and how high up and how high down it goes, the, that alternating current. This might be getting too detailed for just basic welding, but if you're just sitting down to strike your first arc, just remember DC negative for steel and stainless steel, titanium, AC for your aluminums and magnesiums and then pick the right filler rod. Aluminum, aluminum filler rod. Steel, steel filler rod. Let's move up to the top of the table here and uh, take a look at the torch. Now, I'm sorry if this video is becoming a little bit of a longer video, but I just like want to make sure I cover everything, you know? You know, I know like for me, when I'm learning something, I really like have to wrap my head around the whole thing for it to make sense to me. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. I'm sure I'm missing stuff and uh, you know people who are more knowledgeable than me are gonna point stuff out but please do because if there's anything I missed and you know the answer you can put it in the comments below and uh, other people will see those too and we'll all help each other out so let's take a look at the torch this right here is what you call a gas lens this is what I often use when I'm welding uh, steel and anything where I need a lot of gas coverage and I don't want to turn the gas up a lot and I don't really need to worry about getting into a tight area or anything um, this is the cup. You can get different shapes, but they all have to fit on whatever kind of gas lens you're using. This isn't that big of a gas lens. They make, uh, I think they're called Furic cups, Furic, uh, that are much bigger. They have a glass cup, which is kind of cool, but uh, the end of it looks like that. And uh, you can see it's got a little screen in the end of it that the gas comes out of. And then right here is your tungsten. So whatever size you use has to be the same size inner diameter for your tungsten to go through. So right here we got a 16th one, and then uh, I also have a 332nd tungsten here, and that won't go in there. You have to have a different gas lens, a whole different setup. So in the back of the torch is the collet. That actually holds the tungsten in. It, the, the collet goes into the back of this gas lens, and then your cap or little wandy thing comes on, screws it in, and like, you know, presses it down, and that's what tights it, tightens it in and won't let the tungsten move back and forth inside the torch. Same thing with this. The collet and whatever gas lens or diffuser you use all have to match up to the size of tungsten you're using. So if you want a lot of different sizes of tungsten, you're gonna have to have different sizes of these. Another one you might see is this, which I am 90% sure is called a diffuser. It looks like this and it would have like a cup that would go on it that would look like this. So as you can see, much smaller, much easier to get into a space, but it only has these little holes around the outside that let the gas out. So from what I've noticed, if you turn your gas up too high, it seems like it blows it out a little hard. 
and will kind of just blow your gas away. You know, a lot of pressure isn't necessarily better. If I was gonna say what to start off with for your first time welding, I personally like using a lens like this on steel with a cup similar to this one. And then I will use something small like this on stuff like thin aluminum. Of course, if I need thicker aluminum, I'll go up a size with my tungsten. <clears throat> the last thing that I can think of that we really need to go over before we just put down a weld, just because what would a welding video be without, you know, at least welding something, is the regulator. Now the regulator goes on top of your argon bottle, obviously, right here. And this one is called a ball regulator, or it's not a check ball. Um, I'll show you how it works. So if I turn it on, turn the bottle all the way open, make sure this is tight and everything. Uh, there's a lot of pressure in these bottles. This tells you the actual pressure that is in the bottle. And this is what's flowing through the hose and into your welder. So if I turn this welder on, sorry, it's gonna be loud. You can see the ball came up. So this regulator is set to 20. I'm gonna find out what AR means. Welding regulator letters meaning. Okay, I figured it out. This makes a lot of sense now that I think of it. It's measuring your PSI. So this AR is if you're welding with argon. And over here, this HE is if you're welding with helium. So we're welding with argon, so we're at 20 PSI. So let me get the, if I just hit my pedal here and I have my, my post flow set to 15. So I'll have 15 seconds if I hit this pedal. So if I turn this little knob right here, I can raise it up to 30, go all the way down to 10, put this back to 20 for right now. Now, on my way over here today, I realized I'd forgot to bring any metal from my house. Like I haven't, like, like I've said, I haven't moved everything to the shop yet, but uh, I did find these. This is not ideal, just two pieces of square tubing. I don't know how thick they are, maybe 40 thousandths, 50 thousandths thick, uh, but we're gonna weld it. Now, I always like to clean my metal before I do any welding. And uh, for that, I'm gonna use this three inch grinding disc with just a 3M Scotch-Brite pad. Maybe I should cut this in half so we can do a couple welds. Now you always want to have your tungsten as clean as it can be. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, it's ground to more than a 45 degree point, probably somewhere around 60 degrees for steel. I usually do a little, a little flatter for aluminum and pretty sharp for steel. And you want to always grind the direction you're going. So if you have a bench grinder, you know, you want to be like this or like this with the wheel while you're grinding. Um, I don't have my bench grinder hooked up, so I did it with my little three inch grinder, which is not ideal. This one's definitely not perfect, but we'll get there. For this particular job, I'll probably run mine out about that far. I like it sticking out a decent amount so I can see and I try and adjust my gas to get good coverage with however far I have it sticking out. Another big thing is to make sure your material is cleaned. For that, I'll just use this three inch Scotch-Brite. Um, I don't know what we're gonna make. We're just gonna be something dumb. Maybe I'll use this, sh this shorter one here. And we'll just, you know, do something like that. Weld around both of those. So if I'm gonna do that, I would clean up wherever I'm gonna weld. This head sounds a little dry. Keep your tools oiled. Now these pieces of steel were pretty rusty, so I just went and polished the whole thing with the wheel. Um, if you wanted like the bare steel look and you didn't want to have to grind on it, you can wipe it off with lacquer thinner, which I would recommend anyway, no matter what. Also wipe off your filler rod with a lacquer thinner rag. Works really good to keep everything clean. Preparation is the number one thing when it comes to having a good looking TIG weld. 
So the cleaner you have everything, the better it's gonna be. You don't always have to grind it. If it's good clean metal, it just has like the oil on it from the factory, you can just clean, you can just clean that off with some lacquer thinner and you're good to go. This, vid this video really wasn't intended to be like a how-to TIG weld right off the bat, just kind of the basics of becoming familiar with a TIG welder. So uh, we are gonna do a little bit of welding here. I'm not gonna get too much into the specifics in this video, but here we go. Just gonna go around and do a little blast tack without filler rod. So you just push the pedal down until you see the pieces of metal stick together and then you can hold it. I'm gonna do it on my opposite corners. You can see what that looks like. Because whenever you actually do a weld or even when you do this, it's gonna draw the metal one way or the other. So you kind of got to balance it and make sure it's good and secure before you just start welding on it. I'm going to do that all the way around. All right, now you can see we got it tacked all the way around. Uh, it's not perfectly straight because of my quick little ziz wheel there. I'm going to go ahead and weld one of these 90s first. Not too bad. So right here, how the heat, the heat signature came out around this side, well, there was no gas coverage on this side. So I'll probably take my Scotch-Brite and as I move around, clean those off so I'm still welding on clean metal and I'll go all the way around doing that same thing. I really miss TIG welding. This is the first time I've welded since, uh, since I took the new job, left the shop at RCR and started making videos for Austin Dillon and Team Dillon. Uh, I really, really miss this. It's really fun. I forgot how much fun it is. Let me, uh, let me let's, let's finish this up. You can see right there the piece moves. They don't have it clamped to the table. Which would have been a good idea. Now you can see here on the sides, a gas coverage wasn't quite as good. Uh, we don't have that shiny weld like we do on the inside. That 90 helps to keep the gas in there where this, when you're welding a butt weld, which is kind of what this side is, the gas kind of wants to just, just leave you. So I maybe could have adjusted that a little bit better, but uh, it's not too bad, not too bad. Anyway, guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you learned something. I hope it was informative. Uh, if you have any questions or anything I didn't cover, I'm, I'm really, I'm planning on covering a lot in future videos, but leave me, uh, leave it down in the comments and let me know. Please like this video and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. Uh, we're going to do a lot. I'm going to be making a lot of stuff in here, uh, showing you guys all about fabrication and welding for those of you who are interested, and maybe just making some cool stuff for those of you who already know what you're doing. But either way, I'm sure we're going to have fun together. So, uh, But like I said, I'm super excited to get this going. I miss TIG welding a lot. I miss fabricating and grinding and cutting and making things out of metal. Uh, 
I might even incorporate some wood. Wood is somewhere where I lack a little bit. Who knows, I already have a good idea, I think, of what I wanna make for the first project. Um, it's gonna have to do with racing. That's a little bit of a hint. That's it for this week. I'm headed to Talladega, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.